So in this video, based on the knowledge we've we have we have accumulated so far, we want to go ahead and practice this stuff, right? Because practice makes perfect. And we're going to go through a series of examples and try to eliminate and come up with the best possible uh, substitution or elimination pattern that these reactions will go through. All right. So with that being said, let's get it started. So what about this molecule? All right, and we decided to add ethanol to it. Right, we'll just go through SN1, SN2, E1, or E2. So the first thing I like to do is look at my alkyl halide. Is it secondary, primary, or tertiary? Well, I have a secondary alkyl halide here, right, with one hydrogen, right? With secondary, it gets a little bit tricky. We can't really tell. So now we got to go to our or uh, what we're reacting with, right? And we see that we have a weak nucleophile, right? Which is also a weak base. There's nothing charged, right? So immediately, I know that SN2 and E2 are my fast reactions. So I know that this reaction cannot undergo either of those. So is it gonna be SN1 or E1? Well, again, I like to think of it as a fact that we have a secondary alkyl halide, a not so good nucleophile. So therefore, this will probably not undergo elimination because it's a weak base, right? We have a weak base here. Uh, so I would say this will undergo SN1 because again, secondary alkyl halide, weak base, weak nucleophile, right? So this bromine has to leave first. So the bromine will leave. Right, well, the bromine will leave, and I'm kind of just predicting products here instead of going through the mechanism. But the bromine will leave, right? And as you can see, the bromine leaves, we're gonna have a secondary carbocation, right? But we can do one, two hydride shift and get the, the, the ether on this here. So the product of this reaction looks something like this, right? It will get an ether. So this is prime for SN1. How about this one? Why right, we have a CH3, CH2, and maybe I should go over the mechanisms here too, also. But again, I have a secondary alkyl halide and a weak nucleophile. So immediately I could eliminate SN2 or E2 because those are fast reactions. We have a weak nucleophile and a uh, secondary alkyl halide, which means that this reaction will undergo something, a, a slow step and a fast step. So is it gonna be SN1 or E1? Well, again, a weak base will unlikely undergo substitution, uh, under like, uh, uh, sorry about that, elimination. And so this is prime for SN1. So again, the first thing is gonna happen Alkyl, the alkyl bromide is going to leave, right? And you form this the secondary carbocation with a plus charge here. Now the methanol, now the ethanol could go ahead. CH, no, CH3, CH2, OH. Could go ahead. These oxygens on low, these low, uh, electrons on low per comes attack. Uh, and we get something that looks like this. We get an OCH2, CH3. Uh, this is also bonded to hydrogen with a plus one formal charge. And there's a bond here. Sorry, I was going a little bit too fast. And then simply uh, another molecule of ethanol kind of comes in. Act as a base, takes this hydrogen, these electrons kicks off on oxygen, then you get your formal neutral product that looks something like this. Right, we still get this ether product, right? How about this one? And we're gonna add sodium cyanide, right, in, in some methanol, right? Will this undergo SN1, E1, SN, uh, SN2, or E2, right? Well, again, we have a very strong nucleophile 
but we have a polar protic solvent. So again, on a secondary alkyl halide, this is negatively charged, right? This, the, the cyanide anion will be a nucleophile. Now, will it undergo SN2? Probably not. And the reason being is because of your solvent. You have a polar protic solvent and that favored SN1. SN2 reactions favor polar aprotic solvent, which means that there's no hydrogen bonding. And so even though this nucleophile is very strong and ready to tap, the, the fact that our solvent is polar protic, uh, it will not undergo SN2. And so this is just prime SN1 reaction here. And, and so the chlorine has to leave first. We form this plus charge in a secondary uh, carbocation. Now the so now the, uh, the 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 cyanide anion, right? nucleophilic carbon comes and attack, and we get a neutral product to be something like this, right? How about this one? And we add the same sodium cyanide uh, in DMSO. Well, look. We have a strong nucleophile, right? Cyanide anion reactor with the after the nucleophile, but we have a polar aprotic solvent now, right? So this is prime for SN2, even in the presence of a secondary alkyl halide, because this uh, this cyanide anion is so strong and it's negatively charged, you're ready to go. So this will be a fast reaction. It will be SN2 or E2. Now it probably won't be elimination because this nucleophile is so strong and it's ready to substitute. So again, prime SN2 reaction, attack nucleophilic carbon, uh, kicks off the chlorine, and uh, you get your neutral product to be something like this. All right? How about this one? So we see two H, C three H. Oh, sorry, this should be a bromine. This should be a bromine, and you have your hydrogen going away. This group is kind of coming out at you. So what if you have this and you react this with CN minus? What will happen? Now, again, on the secondary alkyl halide, a very strong nucleophile will readily undergo SN2. It's fast, it will not, it will not undergo substitution. This is no base, it's ready to attack. So this is a one-step process. So the carbon comes in, uh, the nucleophilic carbon comes in, attack the bromine from the backside, attack the carbon from the backside, expel the bromine, and we get something to be like this. Now remember, because this is SN2 and we're showing stereochemistry, remember SN2 shows inversion of stereochemistry. So, so your leaving group was in front. The one that substituted will be behind. And it all it does is changes from R to S. All right, so we have the cyanide back there. Hydrogen could be the front. And this C2H. 3H is here. And that will be your product for this reaction. Now, what about this? And you could pause this video as we go along. Kind of use this video as a practice because it really is practice. What about this? What if you take this and react it with sodium chloride? What would be your neutral product? And the answer to this question is no reaction. Hydroxide is a terrible leaving group, so it needs protonation. In other words, this will be a classic E1 reaction because this will need to grab a hydrogen to form water as a leaving group. This is a terrible leaving group. There's no protonation here. There's no hydrogen. There's no H plus source here for this to get protonated. And so uh, put in this uh, organic substrate in solution with sodium chloride will give you no reaction. How about this one? <coughs> What if we take this uh, organic substrate 
and react it with, with uh, hydrochloric acid. Well, again, on a secondary alcohol, right? These are just prime E1 reactions. So just remember that anytime you have the presence of an, anytime you have an alcohol in the presence of an acid, it's E1, which means that you will form an alkene. Just remember that you will have a fast and a slow step because again, this hydroxide needs protonation. Now it has the H plus source. So in the first step of the mechanism, right? These electrons comes in, take this hydrogen, kicks off on the chlorine, and you get something to look like this. Oxygen with two hydrogens plus one formal charge. Now the water could comes in, now these electrons could go ahead and, and kick off the water as a leaving group, and you get something to be like this. Now you have a plus charge, now you have a secondary carbocation and a plus charge. But look, rearrangement, right? We could get this to be a tertiary by these hydrogen shifting down, right? So this will be a one, two hydride, two hydride shift, right? And we get something to look like this. The intermediate look like this, the plus charge here, right? Then simply the water molecule that just leave comes in, act as a base. And we're predicting a major product here. So uh, the Hoffman product, we don't really see in reality. We're looking for the Zeta product. So the, the electrons on, on, on the oxygen comes in, takes out these hydrogen, these are, are, are the, these electrons kicks in, and you form your neutral alkene. And I kind of missed out a couple stuff here. You form your neutral alkene, which would be a product. So anytime you have an alcohol in the presence of an acid, that's your classic E1 reaction. Now, what if we had something like this? All right, and you react this with sodium sulfide. Well, again, the sodium, the sulfide anion will be your nucleophile, right? Again, a secondary alkali, but a very strong nucleophile. And maybe you should write this somewhere in your notes. SH minus will never act as a base. It's only a nucleophile. It's the same thing with CN minus. Only nucleophile. So put that somewhere in your note. Right? And these are prime for substitution SN1, SN2 reactions. Right? So secondary alkali, very strong nucleophile. Two-step process. Attacks the carbon. Expel the bromine. Right now, because this is SN2, remember SN2 shows inversion of stereochemistry. So you will have something that looks like this. Your leaving group is coming out at you. Your neutral product has to be going away from you. The substitution, the substitution atoms.